public. I think there should be a counter. A broadcast video is live now. So there are definitely changes uh, in this platform. So doesn't really matter. OK, so let's start. Today, uh, hello to our lovely community, the SQL community, the best community, actually, in the, in the world. Uh, no question about it. So today I'm joined um, by Dennis from Ukraine, who was in our SQL Saturday here in Bulgaria. So, Dennis, hello from Bulgaria. Hello from Ukraine. The most... Uh, <laughs> and hello from which city? Uh, hello from Kyiv. The most beautiful city in Ukraine and probably in Europe. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably in the world. Probably in the world. <laughs> probably in the whole world. Okay, so we chosen a topic our choices, our choice stopped today on the topic of locking. Actually, why we choose, why we chosen locking and deadlocks? Actually, you asked me. I choose some topic. <laughs> yeah, actually, that was the main I, reason. I, I, I like, I like, I like uh, locking. I like the internals of these mechanisms in SQL Server, and um, I like analyzing deadlocks. Actually, really, it's my favorite topic. Yes. Yeah, really. I am going to do a, a session in Italy after some days from now, three days probably, on locking, locking deadlocks to and isolation levels actually. So I really like the topic too. Um, however, it's interesting for me to to know what's what's the what's the most frequent problem you see related to locks, blocking, and so on. The is there, a, is there one that you can say it's the most frequent one? Mm -hmm. The most problem is uh, slowness of locks. Slowness yes. of locks? Slowness, yes. Uh, more locks you have on your tables, mm -hmm. more uh, poor performance your query will have. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I think everyone understands that. Mm -hmm. uh, what about deadlocks? The most, co the most common deadlock is index deadlock. When index you have deadlock. two indexes, yes, clustered and non-clustered, mm -hmm. and one session reads data from non-clustered index and do look up into clustered, uh -huh. and second session uh, update clustered index, and after that update non-clustered. Uh -huh. So you have deadlock. It's yeah. one of the classic deadlocks, and it's very, uh, very common. Very common. So, yes. so can we use the very, very famous uh, function or hidden, uh, hidden thing? Let's call it this way: the lockers, uh, the lockers thing, which we discussed in Bulgaria. On the top, on I believe in the presentation of of who of Nico, probably. Mm, yeah, I, I don't remember. Remember. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so can we use it in troubleshooting this this type of deadlock? Uh, what do you mean? Some tool? I think the best tool uh, for analyzing deadlocks is Profiler. SQL Profiler? Profiler. Yes. With sure. of course, of course, we are using server side traces, right? <laughs> Not using the GUI. <laughs> yeah, no question no. about it. <laughs> Yeah, but we are going to migrate to extended events soon, I believe, and that's something that's very, very interesting. What do you think about this, actually? It's How do you see the migration from extended from profile to extended? It's events? very interesting, but um, for example, GUI of extended events is very poor right now mm -hmm. in comparison with Profiler. Yes, mm -hmm. Profiler is a buggy tool, and uh, there are some bugs. Um, that are ISO related to the deadlocks. For mm. example, if you use trace, if you create trace on SQL Server 2005, okay, uh, any ser service pack, and okay. check event deadlock graph, okay, and also check some filter, uh, it doesn't matter on what field you use it. Uh, SQL Profiler will not uh, get this deadlock graph event. Maybe SQL Engine will not generate it. So that's and it, I haven't seen that. Yes, still that, now, that's, so that, that's called common bug, and it was fixed only in SQL 2008. 
So you said that. It, so and that is uh, this is only one bug that I I saw in profiler. Profiler, <laughs> so has, has, profiler has bugs. That's that's true. But it's also it it's it very good too. In comparison yeah. with extended deadlocks, uh, for example, analyzing of GUI representation of deadlock is much mm -hmm. easier than analyzing a uh, GUI representation uh, than analyzing XML deadlock. Yeah. If you have only only f uh, several blocks in your deadlock, yes, for example, two processes which block each other, mm -hmm. it's very easy. You can use XML for analyzing. And yeah. if if you have a lot of blocks. Yes, yep. tens of blocks. Um, it's not that easy. Not not so not so easy. Yes. Yeah. I, I oh. prefer maybe someone prefer XML. I prefer first of all look at the GUI on the profiler, and then if GUI will not give me um, information about the deadlock, sometimes yep. it doesn't it, it it doesn't render some elements of this deadlock. Then I analyze XML. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the real representation of the deadlock? Yeah. So, what's your what's your advice if we are faced with a deadlock scenario in SQL Server 2005? How can we capture it easily without facing any box? Um, the better way to uh, without starting profiler, the better way is to use standard events. I think. Another way is to use, uh, especially e in SQL Server 2005. 2005, yes, pre prior to the 2008, mm -hmm. uh, you can use trace flag to write deadlock information to the okay. uh, to the error log of SQL Server. Okay, so and the use trace that info for troubleshooting, yes. Yeah, and, and that and the trace flag just for completeness is number. Uh, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe 12, 22. 22, I, I, yeah. 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. 12, 22, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, one more. Um, in, in my experience, mm -hmm. I noticed few rules of deadlocks. Yes, I, I know. Mm -hmm. I, I call these rules of deadlocks. Uh, and one of them, if you want to uh, fix the deadlock, you should fully understand the reason of it. So uh -huh, you, you, should yeah. you should analyze it and find the real reason. If you yeah. find the wrong reason or you try to fix it based on prediction, uh, you will not success. You will suck, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually. What do you think what do you think about this famous workaround uh, which is uh, which is setting the deadlock priority option on session level? Have you seen anyone using it actually? Um, I haven't seen anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so no that's, one. That's interesting option, but um, if you don't use it, SQL Server decide which transaction he will kill. Yes, yeah, and but he tried. He tried to kill uh, the less expensive transaction. The transaction yeah. that is um, cheaper to roll back. Yeah, the cost for yes. rollback is taken. But is if if, if your system is critical and you don't want to. Uh, I, I don't know. If you don't want to fix these deadlocks, mm. you just want to kill one session, okay, you can use this priority. Yeah, yeah. Because I haven't seen this this functionality used also, but I was wondering probably someone probably someone is using it out there, right? Maybe yeah. maybe maybe some scenarios needed. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do you think about I, I asked you but probably you probably you haven't heard me well uh, because we are far away now. It's easier for you to be in Bulgaria. Uh, but what do you think about this undocumented function, the, the percent percent lockers percent percent? Um, it's great because you can find which key was mm. locked. Uh, uh -huh. it, it, this information doesn't seem in a profiler GUI, but if you open XML, mm -hmm. you, can, you can find the hash of that key. Yeah. So when SQL Server put the lock on the key of index, it computes hash mm -hmm. and, store, and, and stores it into its internal internal hash table. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when some other process want to lock this resource, it will also compute the hash using this hash for hash function mm -hmm. uh, and compare and try to find this lock in that hash table. 
uh -huh. that's the mechanism of SQL Server. And using this function, you can troubleshoot and find which keys uh, are involved in your deadlock. Yeah, have that you can, seen it? That can be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen any problems uh, while using it? Because it's still it's still considered as undoc undocumented, but have you seen any problems while using it? Uh, actually, no. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I I use it only a few times when I analyze real comp really complex deadlock, mm. and I need to find the keys which was used in that query. Uh -huh. uh, I know that there is some issue um, prior to SQL Server 2000 R2, yeah. I think, yeah. when this function can um, can produce hash collision. Yeah. Yes. When two different values produce the same hash. Hash, yeah, I have heard. Yes. That was my next question, actually. Have you and seen this? No, I haven't seen <laughs> Because I, I believe this was a problem prior to the R2 release, right? Something like this. I believe they fixed this in yes. R2. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They, they made this. Um, I don't know how to say to fix it, because hash function always uh, have some possibility of the collision, but it's very, very rare. And in 2000 R2, um, it's, if in 2008, you can definitely find this collision uh, on the billion of records, some bi bi uh, several billion of records. Hmm. Um, I don't know who, but someone from SQL community described this. Um, I don't remember. Okay. Someone described this problem. process and provides script to reproduce it. Uh -huh. So you, you, you can easily get, get that script uh -huh. and, and try it on 2008 and 2000 uh, R2. R2, yeah. Uh, but I really don't don't see such issues. Yeah, me, me neither. In, in, me neither. In I haven't systems. seen this. Yeah, <laughs> and in your system that's, uh, <laughs> that's bad to see, actually. Um, one one interesting question related not that much to to deadlocks. Where do you see the change of the isolation levels being helpful, especially when oh. we talk about especially when we talk about locking and such such type of things? I think the best way uh, when changing of transaction isolation level can help is to improve performance of your queries using no lock, for example. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You don't yeah, have yeah. shared locks, you can do dirty reads. But for, <laughs> for some types of <laughs> for some types of application, like internet portal, when this information is not very um, when when it doesn't uh, when you doesn't care don't care about uh, consistency of your data, yes. Mm. And you just want to show quickly information, get information quickly. But um, there is also an interesting situation uh, which are related to the read uncommitted. Everyone yeah. knows that read uncommitted can uh, get uncommitted data, yes? Dirty yeah. reads. Do dirty reads. The dirty reads. But probably, there, yeah. there is one more collision that is not very common uh, because read uncommitted can um, return duplicated records in your result set. That's How very is that possible? Uh, when you read data from clustered index, mm -hmm. SQL Server actually have two mechanisms of reading that data. Yeah. First one is index scan. When he, um, when SQL Server scans page using the page pointers in the header, yes, yeah. level. And second one is allocation scan. Yeah, the be the worst. Yes, probably. Yeah. Yes, uh, it, it's it's very quick because SQL Server read IAM page. Yes, and then scans all all the extents of this index. Mm -hmm. But um, there can be situation. SQL Server use it only in two situations. First one when you use tab block, so you block all the table and no one can change the data. And uh -huh. second one is read uncommitted. Using read uncommitted, you say to th SQL Server, um, "Okay, give me that data, and I I don't care about." the inconsistency in my results. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So yes. this is not a possible phenomenon in the other isolation levels. Is that correct? Yes. 
Yes, on, only yeah. in read, read uncommitted. And when that CQL server reads this extent, extends um, sequentially, mm -hmm. other process can insert data or update data in that pages. And it can read it twice, for example. Yes, yes when the page split will occur, mm. some piece of data can be read it twice. And that's that, quite a bad thing. Yes. In, uh, yeah. That, that's very, very, very small uh, time frame when this mm -hmm. can occur, but it, it can be. Uh -huh. And and uh -huh. one more interesting reason, uh, on one of my training, I provide this demo with this information. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, one person said me that there is one more. Uh, Which one? One more situation when this can occur. Oh, oh okay. And, and it really occurs when you use read-only file groups in SQL Server. Why is that? I haven't seen that. Because SQL Server use the same mechanism for get for data from the For read-only file groups. Yes. Actually, yes. I actually I, I don't um, uh, I don't check that information, but I think it makes sense. That's so interesting. That's something that that will be very helpful. So everyone should be care about using read-only. So I can I can think of two more questions. So what? Are you aware? I have heard very interesting things related to locking, of course, and to locks. When you put the database in read-only uh, mode, what's going on with the with the locks? Do we have any? Have you heard anything? Do you mean read-only in um, SQL Server 2012? No, from SQL Server 2008 and above. Is no, there actually, a difference actually, actually between the versions? I, Actually, I never used such such feature of SQL Server. Uh -huh, because so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> because I have heard from I believe I was listening to a podcast for uh, for Runes Radio or for for someone uh, I believe it was for Runes Radio, and they were discussing exactly this. When you set a database in read-only mode, there will be no locks. Used whatsoever because there are only yes, shared logs. Yeah, you don't need it. Yeah, you, you don't, don't need, need that. that, and you don't need to do, to waste resources because logs are in memory structures and so on and so forth. And this was very interesting optimization, I believe. I haven't heard of it before, and it was quite interesting for me to 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 find it out. Um, and but actually, I haven't tested it too, so. <laughs> I don't know if it's working good or not. Yeah. Yeah. And the last, probably the last question, um, do you see in your environment or in any other environments, do you see frequently a system using successfully, probably, I should say, optimistic level of concurrency, an isolation level from the optimistic level of concurrency? Yes, yeah, sure. Actually, we use it as a primary. So in our system, okay. yes. Okay. What what do you benefit from it? Performance. 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 Yes. Simply said, performance. Yes. So it's, how? It's, it's very quick, and mm -hmm. uh, you can find a lot of um, not concerns but suggestions that it can it, it can uh, beat your performance. Uh -huh. Yes, because a lot of writes in MDB, but actually, how many writes do you have in your database in comparison with the reads? Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. in uh, in uh, in um, in most in a lot of system, yes, in ninety nine percent of system, yep. I believe there are uh, more reads than writes. Yeah. So True. a lot of dead systems can benefit from such optimistic concurrency level. And uh, in comparison to uh, other reads, uh, other writes in the database, yes, every mm -hmm. write in your database, you know that, yes, uh, write data to the transaction log firstly, mm -hmm. and only then to uh, change to the memory. Uh, and, yep. uh, sorry. And, and then uh, by checkpoint or by lazy writer, this data will come to the actual database file. Yeah. Um, you have some minimally logged operations, yes, like yeah. index creation, altering, bulk insert, etc. Yeah. And the only one place in SQL Server when 
the right operation don't doesn't log in any place, mm -hmm. its version store in TMDB. So these writes is the less expensive writes in SQL Server. So that's that's also very interesting. And what I was about to ask you about us, yeah. So if you are about to use, so if anyone of the zero viewers which we have online at the moment decides to use optimistic level of concurrency, are there any specific recommendations that we can say for optimizing TEMDB? Because the workload that TEMDB will handle will be different and probably will be quite a lot. Actually, or at least will be more than normal. Yes. Actually, there can be contention, uh, contention issues with TEMDB. Mm -hmm. So you should create several files. Yes, yeah. Paul Randall and Robert Davis have great posts on the topics and some uh, sessions on the events. So this is public information, but actually I have never faced with such issues. Yeah, I, I also well, haven't faced any problems related to the page large problem mm -hmm. until now. And I have seen systems using 32 two files, sixty four files, probably they have no. heard of probably they yeah, probably they have heard the one file per core optimization mm. or something. And this this not too weird, but actually I always create several files. Yeah, I, I start with eight <laughs> as a general that's, rule of thumb. That's right? the general rule, yes. Yeah. So so that's something that probably everyone who should con who will consider uh, switching to optimistic concurrency mm -hmm needs to do probably optimize a bit more it's uh, the TEMDB on the system by adding more files faster faster disks let's say it this way you know what I mean I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of SSDs uh, since we are using them from what for six, six months or something we use TEMDB uh, we use SSDs for our TEMDB databases Quite a performance improvement, I should say, <laughs> actually. Uh, have you, and last but not at least, so optimizing TEMDB, have you seen TEMDB on a Fusion IO drive? You know? No, I, I haven't. Okay, so. But I, I, but I know a guy who had. <laughs> I, believe, I believe Evgeny has bought a an, an Fusion IO drive for his system. I, I think Sergey Sergei Alonso. Aha, uh -huh. hmm, probably. I don't know. I have talked with. I I, yeah. I, I think that I heard, I I have heard that from him. Yeah, uh, and he was talking about buying some. Uh, I believe he he bought the the duo, the Fusion IO duo. Hmm, interesting. We'll see. I I talked with him about this, and he said that he will share some results about the performance i uh, i understood from him that he had some problems with the with the, um, he was not giving enough how can he say it not not electricity but he oh, doesn't power power yeah not enough power, power for the cart and the, the cart was performing badly maybe maybe yeah he haven't heard he haven't seen this scenario but he told that when they um, when they gave the card enough power, the card was just extremely fast. <laughs> just went yeah. from slow to extremely fast immediately. I, I saw in past summit some other company, uh, Fusion IO and uh, and second company, I don't know, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't remember their name, mm -hmm. yes, but they have also storage card, which is faster than Fusion IO. Which is faster? Very, very fast. Yes. Is it faster than the Fusion I.O.? I saw some tests in the internet and yes, it was faster. That's and then more, more expensive. And, and of course more expensive, yeah. However, if you want speed, <laughs> then you have to pay for it, right? Yes, sure. <laughs> okay, so I believe we can end here because we probably did more than 20 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I so think we can speak about locking and deadlocks a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> And Maybe a few, few hours. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe uh, the last time I, I was troubleshooting deadlocks, I was faced with a scenario, and I believe you will guess this one. I was faced with a scenario when someone, where someone forgot to enable the option, the, the parameter on the cluster index to be able to use row locks and page locks with it. And so every single statement was using was causing actually table locks. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, that was a fantastic one. Uh, so I will leave you here. Thank you very much for for spending some time here. I will upload the the um, actually it's uploaded automatically. I will upload it for the community, and I'll see you actually very very soon in Ukraine. Yeah, great. this time this time you will be the host. Thank you. See you. Okay. In see see no. See you first in Kiev. First in Kiev and then go to Kharkov. Then yes. go to Kharkov. Sure. Kharkov, yeah. Okay. Dennis, bye for now. Thanks. Bye.